Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at Support Vector Machine Classification with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now we're not going to focus on the mathematics or any of, that, of the other things of that matter in relation to this. I just want to show somebody who's familiar with this a little bit how to do it using Python. So basically with Support Vector Machines, you're trying to create boundaries between your various um, response, responses, if you will, and you're trying to separate them as much as you can, and you're using the border responses. Again, you gotta have pictures for this for it to make sense in order to set up these boundaries. That's what you're trying to do. And so we just have three main goals basically here, data preparation and model development, and we will also be using the linear kernel. In other words, we're going to be trying to draw separations using straight lines, if you will, rather than something more complex that could be curvy linear or quadratic or whatever. So first, you're going to begin by loading these various modules that you can see right here. NumPy, Panda, Pi data set, line three here. This is where we're going to get our, our dummy data from, if you will. Uh, sklearn, uh, we're going to import SVM, that's support vector machines. And then we're gonna have some things here for, for metrics, classification report. And lastly, in line six, we're going to uh, use some stuff for um, model selection, if you will. So we're going to be using the OFP data set that's available in the Pi data set you know, module, if you will. And we want to predict if somebody is single or not. That is our primary goal. So now that we're here, we're gonna go ahead and start preparing our data. So I'm gonna show you some of the code here. And so the first thing we're gonna do in line number one right here is we're going to actually call our data set OFP. And we're gonna call it as a data frame. That's why we have this little dot data frame in front of this. And we're going to drop all our NAs. Now again, there's lots of different ways to approach this, but this is how we're gonna do it for this video. And then we're gonna take a quick look in line number three there at the actual data set itself. So you just press control enter. Oops, I forgot to run the first line. Let me go ahead and do this first. So we run this, and now we go ahead and run this, and there we go. So here's all our data right here. So we have some numerical data. If you wanna know more about the data, I recommend that you just you know use the show, doc, show docs argument um, in the uh, data um, function. And so you can see here that we're gonna have some problems here, like for example, black, sex, and married. These are of course categorical variables, but we have to make them numerical. And so if you can look down at the bottom of my screen, you can see we have something there called dummy variables. We're gonna to have to convert these. Otherwise we can't run them. So I'm gonna go ahead and show this to you. Now of course I probably could have wrote a function for this, but we're just gonna copy and paste it the long way. And so this is all the code for the various dummy variables. So we're gonna make an object called dummy. We're gonna use a function called get dummies, get underscore dummies. And we're gonna have it focus on, you know, the variable black. And this variable indicates whether somebody is, you know, black or not. Then of course, we're going to uh, make the dummy obviously, and we're gonna concatenate it into our original data frame, DF. That's what we called it. And we're gonna add it in there. And then we're gonna rename it. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do here. Again, this will all make sense when you see it as an output um, right here. And then we're gonna drop all the, the, the nodes, if you will. That's what we're gonna do. This will make more sense when you see it. But basically, uh, we're going to go ahead and run this. So let me go ahead and see how this looks. And then we take a look at our data frame again. And you can see here, off to the side, these are the new variables right here. So is we used to call it black. Now we're calling it black person. So <laughs> that's what we're calling it. And so one means yes, they're black. You can see how they line up right here. This is a yes. So this is a, a one right here. And then zero means no. And then we repeated this process for gender. So male, yes, they're male. That's a one. And the other variable, single, insured, etc. So all of our variables that used to be having text here, are now being represented, 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 excuse me, by using ones and zeros. And that's important. Now, of course, some people don't like to use uh, categorical variables and support vector machines, but we're just going to continue this. Now, what we're going to do next is, is we're going to 
drop the variables that we're not going to use just to clean up the data set. This maybe is not necessary, but we're just gonna do this. And so now we're gonna run this. And you can see it's nice and neat. All of the text data, or excuse me, text variables, the categorical ones are gone. And we only have numbers inside our data frame now. That's what happens. So we use the function df.drop. And these are the variables that we dropped up here in this line. There's another thing we need to do, and that is scale our variables. Scaling the variables is important because um, support vector machines is sensitive to scale. So if a particular variable has very, very large numbers compared to the other variables, it's gonna have more influence in the output. So we have to scale things where everything is between like zero and one, and that helps to make sure all the different variables are represented equally, if you will. Now there's some mathematics right here that you know we really don't want to explain because this is not a math video but we're just going to take the, the results subtract the minimum over the max minus the min if you will that's line number one and we take a peek at this and you can already see the difference between what we had and what we had before so all these numbers are now between zero and one compared to what they were before so for example if you look right here at row th three it was a 13 before down here row number three is 0.14 so you can see the difference already and that is what we need to scale things notice how there was no impact on the uh categorical variables because they're one and zero <laughs> so they were already kind of scaled a little bit but everything else is kind of a little bit more uh reasonable for the actual analysis now as we move forward the next goal that we have here is that we need to put all of our independent variables in one object you can you call it x for the independent variables and we need to separate our dependent variable into an object we're going to call y so this is what's going to happen right here in this line i'll show you right now and so you can see we have a long line of independent variables here again i recommend that if you really want to know about these you use the data function from the pi data set module and you just type in the argument show docs equals true and so those are our independent variables and our dependent variable, of course, is the variable called single. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And so now we're ready to do, to separate our train and test sets. This is the last step, I believe, in our data preparation. So I just put this right here. You can see it's pretty long, but essentially what I'm doing is this. I'm creating an object called X train, another object called X underscore test, Y train, Y underscore test, etc. I'm using the module selection uh, dot train test split right here, this right here. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking my information from the object called X and the object called Y and the test set is going to represent 30% of my data. So that's why it has a 0.3 and random set, random state, excuse me, is just setting the C, so one, so that I can reproduce this if I want. So we'll press control enter and we're all set. Now, after all that work, we can finally create our model. So we're gonna go down right here. And so we're gonna create an instance. This C here is, the, is one of the hyperparameters that you have to set. We're just gonna set it to one. Yes, you can explore other values and we could do all kind of tweaking of it if we wanted to, but for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna stick to one. Press control enter. And now we're going to fit our model and check the score using the dot score function. So first we do dot fit, then we do dot score, and our model name is H1. And you can see here that we have an accuracy of almost 75% on the, uh, the training data, which is, I know it depends on your field, but in my field, this is probably pretty good. But of course we wanna test and see, will this hold in the test set? So we first have to do our prediction. So we're gonna create an object called y underscore pred, and we're going to use the dot predict, dot predict function here to run this. Press control enter, good. And so now we have to use our little friend here called pd.crosstabs. This will allow us to see the strength of the model in terms of the various metrics related to classification. Press control enter. Oh, not, not quite yet, sorry. And you can see here, 
on the diagonals right here, we have the times where we had um, true positives or true negatives and true positives, I guess you could say. Looks pretty good, but we need to get more information. And this is what I was talking about a minute ago. And that is looking at our classification report. So this is what I was, this is what I meant. So as you know, the cross tabs kind of gives you the raw output. How many times that we accurately predicted that somebody was not single? How many times we predicted that somebody was single? And then of course, when we make mistakes. And so down here, we get all these various metrics that we just don't really have time to explain in detail, but precision recall F1 score. And they're all around, you know, you know, 73%, 70%, which means that our model in this particular situation would generalize to other data sets. At least that's what it appears from this data. Now again, is a score of 73, 74%, is that considered good or bad? It really depends on the context, but this classification report, what we can say is that these numbers are similar to what we got in the training set. So whether the model is good or bad, it is at least consistent in this context. So that is essentially how we approach and do a analysis, a simple analysis using support vector machines for classification purposes. So let me go back and try to summarize this and conclude the video. So our goal in this video was to try to identify if people were single or married based on various uh, variables that we have in a data set called OFP. So here's what the initial data set looked like. And then after dealing with dummy variables, and of course, after scaling everything, we were able to have it look like this right here. So by dummy variables, for the categorical variables, we were able to make it a one or a zero for yes or no. And then for scaling it, you can see right here, all the values are limited to, to being between the value of zero and positive one. After that, we did our model development. We set up our independent variables here in the X data frame or the X object. In the Y object, we set up our dependent variable. Then we split our data into train and test. We did our analysis or we ran our model. The initial results seemed pretty good. Again, that's context dependent. Then of course we had our final output right here, which shows a consistency between the, the results of the training set and the results of the testing set. So I want to thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. Take care.